Well, over hundreds of millions of years of evolution, some plants figured out a workaround for this oxygenase activity of Rubisco. And this workaround is called C4 photosynthesis. And you can think about C4 photosynthesis as a mechanism to concentrate carbon dioxide for Rubisco. So C4 plants are called C4 plants because if you so repeat Calvin Benson's experiment, Calvin's experiment of labeling with radioactive carbon dioxide, the first product that's labeled is a four carbon compound, hence C4, instead of the three carbon compound, three phosphoglycerate, which is called C3 photosynthesis. C4 plants are, uh, some of the better known ones are corn and sugarcane, uh, the crabgrass that comes up on your lawn. Uh, they're all C4 plants, and they typically thrive in dry and hot environments. As we said, in, in dry, hot environments, plants have to close their stomata to limit water vapor loss, but they limit gas exchange. So what C4 plants do is they initially take up carbon dioxide by a different enzyme, not Rubisco, but a different enzyme co called PEP carboxylase. Okay. PEP stands for phosphoenol pyruvate. We'll just call it PEP. Okay. And the enzyme that, that adds CO2 to PEP is called PEP carboxylase. PEP carboxylase doesn't have Rubisco's problem. It has a very high affinity for carbon dioxide, so even when CO2 levels plummet, get really low in, inside the leaf, it, PEP carboxylase can still keep working. Okay. Another thing is that PEP carboxylase has no oxygenase activity. It completely ignores oxygen no matter how high the oxygen levels get. Now, C4 plants have a little different leaf anatomy. Their photosynthetic cells are now become differentiated into di two different kinds of cells. One type of cell is called a mesophyll cell, and it's pretty much scattered throughout the leaf. A second type of cell is called a bundle sheet cell, and these bundle sheet cells are grouped very tightly around the vascular tissues. The vascular, the vein, the leaf veins are the conductive tissues that conduct water uh, to the leaf and uh, sap out of the leaf down to the roots. And it turns out that these mesophyll cells and the bundle sheet cells in C4 plants have different chloroplasts. So the mesophyll cells use PEP carboxylase and C4 to fix carbon dioxide to form a four carbon compound, which is then converted to malate. This four carbon malate is transported to the bundle sheet cell. And this malate then is decarboxylated and releases carbon dioxide inside the chloroplast of the bundle sheet cell. The bundle sheet cell is actually a C3 photosynthetic cell because it has rubisco and the Calvin cycle. So the rubisco in the bundle sheet cells can use the carbon dioxide that's been delivered by malate to run regular C3 carbon fixation. The product of carbon dioxide release from malate is pyruvate, which then goes back to the mesophyll cells. And inside the mesophyll cells, um, you, they have to expend a phosphate from ATP to phosphorylate pyruvate and regenerate phosphoenol pyruvate or PEP. Now you'll notice that there is a stage here that uh, uses reducing power from NADPH, but in, that's recouped inside the bundle sheet cells because in this decarboxylation reaction from malate, uh, the reducing power is recovered. So there is no net loss of reducing power to operate this 
cycle, but there is a net cost of one ATP for every CO2 delivered to the bundle sheet cell, delivered to Rubisco and C3 fixation in the bundle sheet cell. So you should really think about the mesophyll cells and C4 fixation okay, in mesophyll cells as essentially operating a CO2 concentration mechanism, a way to deliver CO2 with efficiency to the bundle sheet cells where the actual permanent carbon fixation occurs. But there is no such thing as a free lunch there is an energy cost of 1 ATP per carbon dioxide fixed.